back everybody to the channel so today we're going to be doing something additional on the uh, 2013 Cadillac CTS coupe with the 3.6 so for any of you guys who have upgraded the bumper um, taken off the uh, some people call it the grandpa bumper and switched over to this style of a bumper you may have encountered where you have these holes right here for the uh, windshield wiper, well, not windshield, but the uh, headlight washers. And if you have that feature, then cool. But if you don't, you don't have anything to transfer over into there to uh, to um, cover that up. Uh, you may have said, hey, I don't have this and uh, I filled it at, when you first got it before it was painted, but that's not the case here. What's happening here is I needed to uh, put something there and this is what i have these are what's supposed to go there right here these two pieces right here and that's the front of the part number for one side and that's the part number for the other side so these cover those up but underneath would be the actual pump to throw the uh headlock light washer spray on there but that's not what we have so I just want to cover it up because I don't have that feature. So as you can see, there's a little nub in there that actually goes into that hole. All right, and it goes on like that. And then of course the other one would come and go on like that. All right, so today what I'm going to do, cause I've had these in for a bit, I ordered them a while back but I also had to order the paint and the paint took a long time to get in. So I have my primer and I went with a white primer because I'm painting it white so to cover up the black. And I ordered this from Automotive Touch Up, uh, the spray, they do a great job of uh, color matching. And so it, because this is the white uh, diamond pearl, you have two different coats. You have the ground coat and you have the mid coat. And of course, I'll finish it off with a clear coat as well. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to first scuff up the uh, the little pieces a little bit to make sure that the primer stick to it. Not much, just a little scuffing. And then we're gonna put some primer on, let that dry, do a little bit of sanding on that. Then we're gonna do our ground coat and then do our mid coat. And then about an hour after all that, we'll put, spray on some uh, clear coat. All right, believe it or not, but I paid about $80 a piece for these, about 80 bucks. Can you believe that? This is really like a 10 cent part and they were actually charged that much. Now, as you can see down here, this would normally click over the nozzle and that's how it would stay on. But since we don't have the nozzle set up, because that would have been a, a lot of additional money, a lot, trust me, um, I'm going to end up putting some uh, JB Weld on here and gluing it into place when it's all said and done. But for now, we got a nice smooth, shiny coat uh, and we don't want that. So I'm just gonna knock that down a bit. Nothing rough, nothing to get all crazy about, but just, I just wanna be able to make it so that there's something for the paint to stick to. All right, now on this next part, I would suggest you guys have like a terry cloth, um, more, or probably more, what do you call it, a microfiber cloth to wipe these down to get the dust off and also have a, what they call a tack rag. They cost like 50 cents or whatever in the uh, 
pink section of your hardware store um, and it picks up on dust so that would be recommended not something that's full of dust like a toilet paper that I have here um, to get all the excess dust off from you standing and then you want to get your body oils off of there because any oils on there that paint will separate so to avoid that what you want to do you want to wipe this down your fingers too that's going to be touching it you want to wipe this down with some uh, alcohol safe I'll go over it like that to knock any toilet paper remnants off of there and let that air dry which it should since real quick since it's alcohol all right so now it's time to paint so I'm using a couple of oily bottles as my <laughs> as my clean zone uh, they have tips on them so I'm setting them up on there so that they're off the ground and I'm able to get all the areas and so it's not sitting in a puddle of his own uh, uh, primer and paint when I'm doing it. So I'm first going to start off with some some primer. And in case you guys don't know, there's always like a little black mark uh, that they put on there to let you know the point, the um, where where you know, because sometimes they'll be pointed in that direction. They want you to point the where it comes out at in that direction. All right. Don't go on heavy. It's okay if you don't cover it up all in the first shot. All right, so I know the wife and kids will be back soon. So to be safe, I decided to relocate over to the garbage area. Now, normally I wouldn't paint anything outdoors because of dust, bugs laying in on there, all that type of stuff. But these are so small, I'm not stressing over it. And to be quite honest, if it was uh, a big piece, I wouldn't paint it because of the color. This pearl is difficult to match. So, and the layers and doing it just right. So these are small. Any imperfections really wouldn't be picked up as uh, unless, unlike if it was like a fender or something like that, I would never attempt something like that. All right, so now I'm gonna let these sit and dry for a bit. And uh, then I'll come back, uh, do a little light sanding, and we'll start to throw some paint on it. All right, so now let that dry, do a little bit of sanding on that. So now I wanna take the uh, base coat and I wanna put a few coats on there. So I put all my coats on. I put three coats of the uh, ground coat and I put uh, three coats of the uh, mid coat on. And so it's starting to get dark out here now. I've waited about an hour. So now I'm just going to finish it off with uh, probably about three coats of a uh, of clear coat now at this point. So I'm going to let that sit for a bit and come back and put a couple more coats on. All right. So I would say overall, these turned out pretty good. The color match is awesome. They're nice and smooth. 
I would only thing I would probably suggest when you if you guys do it is to use a finer um, sandpaper, um, maybe something in the maybe the 800 range, but not something as rough as I did. Um, but these turned out really nice. Uh, I like the end result. Um, uh, I put it up to the paint on the car, and it was it looked good. Uh, it was a perfect match. All right, so now we are ready to install the uh, the covers. And what we want to do, we want to make sure to be able to put them both in a way that aesthetically are in the same um, on the same angle as the other. And so there's going to be some eyeballing because you've got the ability to kind of have them outwardly, but I think we want them somewhat parallel to the line here. So again, I want to try to get it somewhat close to the parallel, parallel to the line here of the, of the headlight. And what I'm going to use is some JB Weld to hold it in, space, in place. And as we know, JB Weld is black. So the last thing we want to do is have any of that spill over onto the paint when we put it on. So we can't move it around. So we have to know exactly where we want to set it at. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these, some tape down to create a border and to help remind me of exactly where it needs to go at when I put it down here. All right, so what we want to do now <clears throat> is mix up our JB Weld because what we want to do is take the bottom of this right here and put some JB Weld in these areas up around here, just on the inside. So it's touching on the inside and here. We don't want it to squeeze out, so we really want to be as minimalistic as possible to put it on the bottom because you know as you apply pressure down, it'll squeeze out and that black will show through and that will look horrible. So I uh, was originally planning on finding like a little block or something and JB welding it on the inside of here to use that, the, the, the surface on the bottom of that on the inside, but I got lazy. So we're just gonna put some on around at the bottom and I believe this stuff is gonna be grayish in color, not so much black, but either which way, black or gray, it would not look pr pretty amongst that white. We're only going to need a little bit, so that's way more than what we need. Get that out of there. Put my cap back on. All right. I think we have a good mixed mixture. And I'm wanting something with a little bit finer of a point than the Q-tip. 
So I'm gonna use uh, this uh, toothpick <laughs> right here to apply some on. Oops, I got a little bit on my finger there. Wipe that off. All right, mistakes are already starting to happen. That's where it goes into the hole, right, that little hole. So I can put a bit more around there. And we'll put a little bit over here. I think in three corners should be more than enough. And a little bit over in this corner over here. All right. So let's go put the first one on. Just want to get just a hair into that corner over here, just a hair. edit, I'll get a little hair over here. Not much, just a little bit. And I'm going to flip it over. And this is the passenger side one. Over. Make sure nothing's on my fingertips. Once it's on, I don't want to have to touch it. Oh, a little bit came out. A little bit squeezed out of there, so I'm going to have to clean that out of there. That's what I mean. Don't screw it up like that. A little bit squeezed out. Taking my key tip to clean that off. And I say the cleanup went actually pretty good using a Q-tip to do that. Putting a little bit of pressure down and then leaving it alone. Now I'll move over to the other one. sure I am free of any remnants of that JB Weld. I'll take it and flip it over. Try to line her up. Drop her down. Apply just a hair of pressure along the top. And there we go. Now from there, I'm going to leave it alone, let the JB well set, and then later we'll take the tape off and give it a little push just to make sure they are strong enough to handle bumps. <laughs> All right, so I believe the uh, epoxy has enough time for the initial curing period to see if it's hard enough. I can go ahead and pull off the tape. Okay. 
this side. Also, I'm not going to drive it today. I'm going to let it sit so it has a good, strong 24 hours worth of curing time. All right. So there we go. That's how you add on the caps for the, the covers, if you will, for the aftermarket CTS bumper. Um, for where you don't have the headlight <laughs> sprayers. Uh, so if you like, hit the like button and definitely hit that subscribe button. Thanks for joining. Bye.